can go ahead and call the meeting to order. Clerk, will you call the roll? Here. Clegg. Here. Allie Burton. Here. Sanchez. Here. Willits. Here. Woodings. Here. All present. Thanks. Well, welcome. We've got everybody right in front of us already. We're going to cover first the Fulton Street design. Uh, I'll just have you guys jump right into it. Do you want to introduce yourselves? You, you've been here before to talk with us. Uh, yes, I have. Christopher Hawkins with the Land Group, uh, yeah. 1369 East Holly Street, right, Boise, thanks. Idaho. Welcome back, Zach. Zach Meyer, Project Manager, CCDC. And of course, Karen. Karen Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, glad to be here to talk with you about Fulton Street today. So we do have a requested action to adopt a preferred concept. And uh, we've got a few to share with you and a uh, little bit of a, um, well, changes that were made at the end to bring it to um, something everybody could get behind. So just to refresh the location, uh, we're south of Myrtle, south of uh, Bodo in this case, between Capitol and 9th Street. So two blocks of Fulton, four block faces that uh, CCDC has a project to improve. And just on the history, if you recall, we did uh, send you a Friday memo back in the fall when the project kicked off to let you know it was happening and collect any thoughts you had at that time. And then we were just before you in January uh, with the concepts before they went out to the public. And now we're back to get your input on a preferred concept. Thanks, Karen. Um, as discussed back on January 11th uh, at that work session, the objectives of the project are to implement comprehensive infrastructure, which improves safety and mobility, enhances business opportunities, and helps activate the street life in the area. At that meeting, we presented uh, or previewed two alternative concept designs, which are stacked here on the left side of the screen, and we believe both of those meet the objectives of the project. Concept one on the upper portion of the screen um, really is a standard streetscape and implements elements that we're familiar with throughout downtown. Uh, it implements 23 and a half foot wide sidewalks with on street parking and a single row of street trees on each side of the street. Concept two, which we coined the urban canopy concept is shown on the lower graphic. Um, it provides uh, a fairly unique identity for the corridor with 27 foot wide sidewalks dual street trees on both sides, and um, um, it, it does so, unfortunately, at the expense of losing parking on one side of the street. In plan view, we see concept one here with the continuous wider sidewalks and single row of street trees on each side. Bull belts would be located at each of the pedestrian crossings, and uh, the former railroad spurs located at the north-south alleys on each block would be enhanced with a a slightly different paving scheme, which would enhance the pedestrian experience as well as calm traffic by visually breaking up the corridor. Uh, four accessible or four on street accessible parking stalls would be provided, one on each block face uh, of the corridor. And for comparison, concept two here showing that dual row of street trees, very similar sidewalk. Um, we would get about four additional feet of sidewalk with this alternative over, over concept one, and the reduction in the street is about 20% of the overall uh, street width. Um, we should mention that um, one thing we are considering, and it's really more of a design detail to work through PDS and ACHD during final design, but we are considering some alternative paving treatments for the parking lane, which would have a, a traffic calming benefit as well as some environmental benefit. Um, specifically, we're looking at some pervious paver treatments for that parking lane. Madam Mayor? Yes. Zach, is that a raised intersection on 8th and Fulton, or, or is it street level all the way through? Madam Mayor and Council Member, it would be an at grade. Um, it, we are attempting to retain as much of the existing intersection, was, which was improved through a project in 27, 18, 2018, so it's not terribly old and was improved with that project. Cool. Zach, or sorry, Madam Mayor, <laughs> Zach would. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples where we've done pervious, pervious pavers. Um, just out here on, um, gosh, why am I forgetting what all the streets are? Main, Main street, street, just outside of City Hall, would it be similar to that? 
That's correct. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor and Council Member. Yeah, Main Street and then Broad Street also has that treatment. All oh, right. Um, okay. Through the live district. And I'll turn it over to Chris to walk through some of the recent uh, public outreach that we did. Yeah, so since uh, we met with you guys last, I think the, the biggest endeavor that we've taken on is trying to meet with all of the different stakeholders um, from, you know, really getting granular information from the property owners that are immediately adjacent to the street by doing a, more one on one interviews um, to look at all of the concepts and sort of their thoughts. Um, the other area that we really have focused on since we last met with you is more of a general public input through an online survey that was conducted mid-February, um, and we've really sort of synthesized some of those results and used those to inform how we might move forward. Um, also, we did do a, a virtual open house, um, and then we have met with other stakeholder groups sort of separately as one-offs, one of those being the Accessible Parking Committee, um, where they confirmed sort of the recommendations we have for parking or the ADA parking stall locations. And then we also met with the Downtown Boise Neighborhood Association. And then we also have had ongoing meetings with public agency staff um, to review sort of the concepts and where things are going. So in, in all of the public engagement that we've done so far, really we're trying to identify um, kind of three areas for input. The first of those being sort of what is their impression of Fulton Street today? What are the programming priorities that they have and, or wanna see for Fulton Street? And then um, finally, you know, we did present these two concepts and we asked them specifically to, to pick one of the two options. So uh, we just wanted to start off with some of the comments that we received um, through the public engagement process, uh, trying to identify what people thought of Fulton Street today. Um, there were a small group that had some somewhat positive thoughts on Fulton Street today where, you know, it is quiet because it's not a through street, so it's got lower traffic, so um, people appreciated that. It does currently have pretty good short-term parking because it is not paid parking in this area, um, which is for as close as it is to, sort of to the downtown core in the Bodo district. Um, that's something that people appreciated, but otherwise most people thought it was generally okay or fine um, when it came to sort of positive impressions of it. Um, by, by far more people had sort of negative negative impressions of how it exists today. And, and those dealt mostly with the fact that it's it's not complete. Um, we don't have continuous sidewalks. It's messy. A lot of people think of it more of as a back alley. So those are sort of the impressions that we have um, today. When we talk to sort of the individual property owners, um, their focus more is on, of course, sort of business operations, um, but they do see, as they talk about impressions, the advantages of having this public investment and how it would improve their properties within that area. So um, sort of taking a, a big look at, at the programming priorities from our public outreach survey, and then also just asking that group sort of what their preferences are. Um, really the tree canopy um, is what rose to the top of what people were most passionate about and had the most positive responses about um, when we presented these concepts. And then the general public generally, you know, wanted to see more opportunities for a cafe, uh, on-street dining, widened sidewalks, things that would enliven and activate the space down there more. And then, there, of course, there are some still because we had sort of people who work in the area um, and people who are using some of the services down there. There's still a smaller group of those that do want to see on-street parking uh, maintained as part of the programming. But by and large, because I think of this desire to really strengthen the tree canopy and create a unique space, you can see that over two thirds of the respondents from the public survey did prefer concept number two. Um, many people had comments that were along the lines of, you know, streets should be designed for people. We want pedestrian oriented. So I think that's sort of why we, we found those results. And then you see about a third, a little less than a third of them preferred concept number one. And then we did give them the option to say, okay, if, if you wanted to pick and choose uh, would you like to see sort of a combination of the two that maybe would get back some of the parking or some of the other components that you wanted to see um, in the final product? But, but by and large, certainly um, concept number two was the preferred option, which is the urban canopy option. We then sort of contrasted that with our individual interviews with the property owners. And, and of course, what you'll find when it comes to programming elements is it, it's somewhat reversed, and that is, again, because they're concerned primarily about um, business operations and sort of accessibility for folks. So um, 
on-street parking sort of rises to the top of their list of priorities and then also maintaining service and loading opportunities. But then also they do want to have wider sort of sidewalks for cafe dining and folks uh, to more easily get from one end of, of this area to the other. Um, what you can see there sort of in the image of the map is we did explicitly ask them to, to identify which one they would prefer. And, and we got a sort of a mixed bag of, of responses there. Um, there were several that did say that they preferred concept number one. Again, parking was primarily the concern that motivated them to make that decision decision. Um, you had one that preferred concept number two. And then the ones that are identifying peak, they preferred um, concept number one, unless there might be future structured parking in the area. And, you know, sort of high level, they like the idea of having more trees, wider sidewalks. But if, if the requirement was that they gave away their parking, they just could not, couldn't get there. Madam Mayor, Zach, will you remind us um, real quick, because I know that I know that we don't want to make parking a priority on streets, but in this area, especially, you know, as someone who has used a lot of these businesses around here, parking is kind of at a premium in this neighborhood. Um, what are the future plans for structured parking here? Madam Mayor, Council Member, uh, I believe Christopher was going to touch on that as well as I was in the, later on, but yeah, we can definitely cover that now. So we had previously discussed public structured parking with a redevelopment project on South 8th Street. Um, immediately adjacent to the Fulton Corridor. And our understanding last time we were here is that that was still on in the cards. Uh, since January 11th, we've revisited that with the developer, the owner developer, and it appears they are reprogramming their desired project, which um, means that structured parking is no longer uh, really being considered. It's They expressed it as being unlikely to happen with their project. So definitely a change in um, context with off-street public parking not being available or more uncertain. Yeah, Madam Mayor, um, just to follow up. So across from White Dog Brewing, that's currently surface parking. Is that lot is expected to redevelop at any time? Madam Mayor and Council Member, um, we, we don't have solid um, timelines for that. The owner of that uh, parking lot does have plans, at least conceptual plans for high density residential on that parcel. Um, I'm not sure how far along in the process he is, um, but he has expressed an interest to redevelop that. Yes. Okay. And then one more question, Madam Mayor. Um, the other two surface parking lots that currently exist on Fulton, closer to 9th Street, um, are what I'm just trying to like get the full status of parking to make sure that we're making an informed decision about what happens on the street. Madam Mayor and Council Member, yeah, the uh, two lots on the south side of Fulton between 8th and 9th are currently primarily parking. There's a small business on one of the lots, but um, we believe that those will be redeveloped in the near term as well, although both existing property owners, it's two owners right now, uh, have not indicated a definitive plan or program to redevelop. So um, no, no, okay. nothing affirmed yet. All right, thank you. Thank you. And just to finish up this slide, the last two that are in a, um, those two didn't have a strong opinion between either of the concepts because in either concept, they still have on-street parking and a wide sidewalk right in front of their, their building. So they didn't have a strong uh, preference and didn't want to commit to one or the other um, as we, we sat down with them. Um, so <laughs> sort of as we looked at um, how we would get somewhere that might please sort of all of the stakeholder groups, we are exploring the idea of doing a hybrid concept that takes components of both concept one and concept two to try and sort of give everyone what they want and try and achieve as many goals as we can on this on this project. So uh, what we would take from concept one, which is the concept that generally was preferred by the property owners is more of the single roofs, trees, and still having it um, on street parking on both sides of the road. So we, we're not eliminating any parking um, with that concept other than what the standards will allow. But then, in order to 
increase our tree canopy, we would, and retain some of the existing trees, uh, we would look at adopting from concept two on the opposite side of the street, maintaining that double row of street trees and a slightly wider sidewalk. Um, so that hopefully we could sort of appease everyone. More trees, a little bit more unique character by having sort of um, the double row of trees on one side and a more traditional streetscape on the opposite side, but then also maintaining um, all of the parking that we was shown in concept number one so that we're meeting the needs of those uh, property owners uh, that are right along the corridor. So if we kind of dive into a little bit more of the detail, you can see that cross section a little bit larger here. Um, we see that the sidewalk widths are narrower than what was proposed in concept two, but they're by no means narrow. Um, the proposed sidewalks are still between 19 feet and 24 feet. And while they may not be as wide as sidewalks, say on Broad Street in front of Boise Brewing or some of the wider sidewalks in Bodo, they're still significant sidewalks compared to the majority of those found downtown, which are on the range of 13 to 16 feet. So for a sense of scale, uh, we still achieve a, a fairly nice pedestrian realm. Uh, the design team took a stab at uh, creating a concept layout of the hybrid uh, that Christopher um, uh, previewed there and as shown on the screen here. So um, between Capitol and 8th Street on the right hand side of the corridor, we elected to put the dual row of trees on the north side, as that would be the side of the street that would get the most solar exposure during the heat of summer and could hopefully have the best benefit um, from that increased street tree canopy. On the left hand side of the corridor between 8th and 9th, we've identified the dual row of trees on the south side. And that is, as Christopher mentioned, to try to save three existing large trees. But there's also some issues with the north side of the street that um, are working against us. So at Boise Contemporary Theater, there's an existing loading dock structure that encroaches quite a ways into the public right of way and would prevent dual rows of trees there anyway. And then in addition, uh, at 518 South 8th Street here on the corner of 8th and Fulton, the, the first floor of that building is about three feet above sidewalk level. So built into that structure, it is a bit of a challenge to activate the street through retail or dining at the street level. That would create a challenge that may not allow us to achieve the full benefit of that dual row of trees with the existing building. So a couple of things that lend itself towards putting trees on the south side. So the hybrid really does meld together um, characteristics of each of the two original concepts. And we feel it does meet the goals of the project as well as meeting the desires of the property owners, which are generally, as Christopher mentioned, to keep on-street parking. Um, and as we mentioned earlier on the topic of parking, since off-street parking is no longer um, as, as um, secure as we thought it was previously, that elevates the consequence of removing parking on Fulton uh, for this neighborhood. So with that, um, our recommendation is to adopt the hybrid concept as the preferred alternative to move forward into final design and then into construction in 2023. With that, we'll happily take any questions. Madam Mayor, oh, I think Elaine maybe had her hand raised first. Um, so the concept one, 31 stalls, 30 trees. Concept two, 16 stalls, 38 trees. What's the hybrid one get us in the end? Uh, it would be the, the same amount of on-street parking, I believe at 30. 30 stalls and I'm gonna have to ask Christopher to tell me the number of trees. Yeah, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Member, uh, we actually were able to increase our trees even a little more from concept number two because once we realized there was a priority to keep them, we tightened the grid um, so that we did end up, I think, more along the line or what, what are the two numbers we have currently 32? I think we got to 40 um, in saving those two additional trees and tightening the grid um, on some of, and spacing on some of the trees, but still keep them within um, what it would be reasonable for the urban context and sort of the standards of the city. And then Madam Mayor, before, so the way that it is right now, do we have any idea how many on-street parking spots are available in its current state? Uh, Madam Mayor and Council Member, I can skip down here to a slide where we we did actually tally that there's about 55 total parking stalls right now, but it is a mismatch of perpendicular parking and parallel parking, as well as some privately signed parking in the right of way. Um, so we we understand it's about 55 publicly accessible stalls um, right now. It's, I'm sorry, that is for the entire uh, neighborhood, including 8th Street. So as you can see, there's uh, 14, 
20, 20 stalls on 8th Street as well. Yeah, and technically all of them are available to the public, even though some of them may be signed that says this is for this company's parking only. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Madam Mayor. Um, so in the hybrid concept, in, in the original concept one, you showed a 33 foot um, street section in the hybrid concept, you're showing 36, why, why that difference? Madam Mayor and Council Member, thanks for that question. So we received some comments from ACHD that indicated they would not allow the 33 foot um, cross section. From, Why not? Uh, they have a policy section that dictates commercial street minimums are 36 feet, even though generally speaking, their policy identifies a 33 foot minimum corridor. We did discuss that with Boise Fire um, early on in the process. We knew that would be a, a, a Oh, yeah, and confirm being with connected, them. they're fine with the 33. Boise right? Fire did indicate yeah. they were okay with um, that. I would be happy to take that to the commission and ask for a waiver on that. Um, and at least go for 34. I don't see any reason we should stick with 36 just because they have a policy without asking for a waiver. I think we too often say, oh, they have a policy. We should, sorry, we can't do that. And I don't know how others feel, but I'm happy to start asking for waivers on this stuff. Madam Mayor. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, so with, with the hybrid design, is it anticipated that there's gonna be more uh, outdoor activity on the sidewalks, like people having cafes, that sort of thing, where people are gonna be eating outdoors, that sort of thing? Had a mayor and council member. That's the hope. Um, okay. That's one of the reasons we're we're in, in this business is to help activate uh, business um, on the sidewalk to uh, engage adjacent properties to hopefully um, incentivize them to add patio dining where where feasible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering um, if there's any attempt uh, to mitigate uh, people uh, with large, rumbling, loud smoking vehicles, uh, harassing people, um, because we've experienced that the last couple of years, uh, people's uh, outdoor enjoyment of outdoor eating establishments. I mean, we were able to curb some of it in closing down 8th Street. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's any going to be any mitigation of that so that people can truly enjoy it the way uh, businesses intend for them to enjoy it. Madam Mayor, uh, Council Member, I don't think there's anything inherent in the design that would prevent that other than um, we are instituting traffic calming measures. So it may not be as inviting for um, that type of user, but otherwise I, I don't know if there's uh, any physical way the no. project can preclude No, that. you just said it. You said there were traffic calming measures. So I think that would be great if that would be possible so that people can actually enjoy what we're working to provide for them. Madam Mayor, yeah, I have questions. I want to drill down a little bit on this. I'm, I'm looking at the Google map. How many current businesses exist in that area today that could offer patio dining or outside dining? Madam Mayor and Council Member, there's currently only two restaurants that are active on the corridor on the corner of Capitol and Fulton. Okay, thank you. Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to, if I could, make a motion about direction um, that we direct staff to um, move forward with concept, with the hybrid concept, um, and that we direct staff to approach ACHD about what it would take to get a waiver on the 36 foot um, width and pursue a narrower width. Second. Your motion is second. Second. And Mary. I think one of the reasons why I think that this is a good route to go and trying to narrow that up a little bit is that we do have sidewalks that just got a little bit skinnier. We still have amenities that we have to put on some of those sidewalks from bicycle parking to benches and other things like that that are potentially gonna narrow those up even more. And we've got a um, feedback from all the stakeholders in the group who basically said that there's not a lot of people who are using this road anyways. It's quiet, it doesn't get a lot of commercial traffic. It's not a, a big thoroughfare. And so it doesn't make sense to me why you would necessarily need to build this for commercial vehicles um, when it seems like it could definitely incorporate those with a, some smaller. And so I, I definitely agree 
you know, with the need to maximize the sidewalk space and reduce the road space. Um, and I, I would also encourage us to be looking at on-street bicycle parking. I don't know if that was identified in one corner. Um, it looked like there were some lines on there. Maybe that's what that was. Um, if not in some of those other areas, because that's another way to reduce the amount of um, congestion that we see on the sidewalk and really support those businesses in a major way. Because if you can fit 12 bicycles instead of one car in front of their business, that should be good for them. Madam Mayor, uh, I'm going to support the motion. I just want to thank you for listening. This is really hard to try to please everyone. I think you've come up with a great solution. Um, I'm really pleased that you reached out to the businesses, tried to hone down on what their concerns were. And I think parking matters downtown. And particularly now that we aren't going to have some of the investments that we thought we we're going to have, just appreciate you doing all that you can to take the best of both. So thank you. Do you have something? No. All right, Clark, will you call the roll? Willits. Yes. Woodings. Yes. Bagent. Yes. Clegg. Yes. Halliburton. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. All in favor, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes. I move that we go into executive session, personnel, land acquisition, records exempt from public disclosure, pending probable litigation, communicate with risk management regarding pending probable claims, Labor contract, Idaho Code 74206-1BCDFINJ. Second. We have a motion and a second. Clerk, will you call the roll? Willits. Aye. Woodings. Yes. Agent. Yes. Clegg. Yes. Allie Burton. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. All in favor, motion carries. Thank you. We will be back here at six.